the first debate up and coming in Colorado, and it could make a difference. Where candidates stand in early October isn't always where they end up in November. And we'll weigh in on the controversy over party identification and polling. I'm Frank Newport, Gallup Editor-in-Chief. I'm Susan Page, Washington Bureau Chief of USA Today. And this is Election Matters. Well, Susan, we're sitting here prior to the first debate, which will be at the University of Denver, Colorado. You'll be there in person on there. Wednesday. A lot of discussion about whether debates can actually make a difference. Going back to 1960, now we've done analysis, a lot of political scientists have done analysis and what have you. You've recently reviewed the data, and I have as well, but your conclusion, which I tend to agree with, is they can make a difference. I think they can make a big difference. Look, we have had 10 elections that have had televised debate. Mm -hmm. In three of them, the candidate who went in with a lead came out with a deficit. And the uh, eventual winner came out of those debates uh, with a newfound lead. That was in 1960 with John Kennedy, in 1980 with Ronald Reagan, and in 2000 with George W. Bush. So years that ended zero. So years that ended mm -hmm. zero, you've seen an actual change in the standing of the candidates that held up to election day. And in two other elections, in 1976 and 2004, a race that had, where a candidate had a big lead, he came out of the uh, debates with a small lead, put the race within the grasp of the other candidate, although it didn't end up changing the ultimate outcome. So in five of those 10 races, you can say the debates had a big effect. Now we have to be a little cautious because we didn't always have tracking back then. So a lot of times we're making some inferences because we don't know precisely because causality is very hard to prove because there are other things swirling around in the campaign environment, but it certainly seems convincing. Let's look at the zeros quickly. That's Nixon Kennedy. Yes. Everybody hears that when they take political science 101, right? That Nixon was sweating. Kennedy was tanned, having been in Palm Beach at his father's estate, and, and he seemed to have won the election, right? He didn't win. An object mm -hmm. lesson for candidates in the television age. Absolutely. And Nixon skewed makeup, supposedly, right? Thought that wasn't manly, and he learned his lesson there. Uh, zero's, uh, eight zero was Carter, who had been leading, and Reagan, they only had one debate, right? Mm -hmm. One debate right mm -hmm. at the end of the campaign. Uh, it's where Reagan said the iconic, are you better off than you were mm -hmm. four years ago in his closing statement. It was very reassuring to voters. He ended up winning that election. Yeah, he won big. So there may have been some other things going on, but clearly Carter had been ahead before that. And by the way, Lydia Sato did an analysis, showed an earlier debate. I think you were there with John Anderson and Reagan sans Jimmy Carter. He wouldn't debate in the first one. May have hurt John Anderson because he fell in the polls after that. So it could affect third party candidates yes. as well. Yeah. And then, of course, 2000, that was Gore uh, and George W. Bush. Um, and Gore went, Gore, Gore went in with a lead. Uh, George W. Bush came out with a lead. Now, of course, some Democrats may point out that, Democrats and others may point out that uh, Al Gore actually won the popular vote that year. Uh, but he lost the Electoral College, and if he had maintained the kind of lead he had before those debates, surely we wouldn't have had that kind of split decision. Yeah, and, and that was the one where Gore was trying, experimenting with different ways of presenting himself uh, in the debate. He walked towards Bush in one of them, and a lot of analysts say he wasn't the most comfortable-looking guy. Mm -hmm. Lesson for Mitt Romney, mm -hmm. he needs to look comfortable, right? Now, you mentioned a couple of them where it may have at least tightened the race. 76 is a good one. Carter was way ahead of incumbent Gerald Ford. Uh, Carter only won by two points. And Gerald Ford had a famous gaffe in, uh, in the last debate, but he made up a lot of ground in the debates, mm -hmm. although in the end he didn't win. Also, in, in 2004, uh, John Kerry made up a lot of ground uh, in the three debates that he had with George W. Bush, but not quite enough to win that election. By the way, in our current poll, which is coming out Wednesday, but we'll, we'll tease one reaction there. We ask Americans who's going to win the debate, and... And they're very sure that uh, Barack Obama will win. I mm -hmm. think, uh, what is it, 57% to 33%. Is that they good say for Obama or bad to be seen as well, the, the expectations are high, but even 17% of Romney supporters say they think Obama will do better. Yeah, we'll have more data on this Wednesday, so stay tuned. But we also ask Americans if the debate would make a difference. And it looks like to us, based on that and previous questions, enough Americans say yes, the debate could make a difference, that could change a close race. Absolutely. By the way, we looked at where candidates were. Uh, first poll we did at Gallup in October back through the years, and at least a couple of instances, uh, the guy who was ahead uh, certainly didn't go on to win, or at least tied. So it shows that where people are now doesn't necessarily mean that's where they're going to be when the election is over. And one of those was back to Carter, Reagan, and Anderson. Carter was ahead, as we mentioned. First poll in October back in 1980, and it's in all the history books, Reagan won. Mm -hmm. <laughs> 
And what about the other one was 04? Well, we had, uh, in, in 2000, Gore would have been ahead of, of Bush. Mm -hmm. And in 04, they were tied. Uh, in, uh, John Kerry and George W. Bush were tied in the first, uh, in the first poll in October. And of course, uh, Bush ended up winning that. Yeah, a lot of years where it's kind of a runaway, like Clinton versus Dole in 96, of course, who was ahead went on to win. But there are enough examples where the race was close that things changed to make us conclude, will you agree, that things can change. Things Either can candidate change. still at least has the potential. As, to in, in elections that are pretty competitive, and certainly this election is one of those, it's too early to conclude that the race is over. All right, makes sense. Now, controversy, right? This is deja vu all over again. How's that, to borrow that phrase? When one candidate is ahead in the polls, it's not uncommon for supporters of the other to cry foul at the polls. Believe it or not, they criticize the polls, right? That something must be wrong and they're skewed. We certainly heard that back in 04. Gallup, uh, among others, saying, oh, Bush is ahead. He can't be that far ahead. And now, of course, we're hearing from Republican-oriented critics that the polls are somehow flawed that are showing uh, Obama ahead. And if what the one thing that uh, critics have focused on is the par distribution of party identification, saying there are too many Democrats in the polling list now. Now, you have written about this subject. You don't wait for party ID. Why not? Gallup doesn't wait in most major pollsters, don't, because party ID is an attitude. We do wait for demographics like age and race and things that are solid, and the Census Bureau gives us firm figures on what the distribution should be. But there are no national figures on party ID. We wouldn't know what to wait to, except old exit polls, and we don't think that's a valid standard to wait to at all. And party ID shifts. So if in a given poll, Obama moves ahead on the ballot, probably more people are gonna say at the end of the poll they identify as a Democrat. So it's kind of his yoke to the party ID and it's not a control variable at all. So if you wanna criticize a poll, just say, uh, there are too many Obama voters, but don't try to tie it to party ID, at least that's our, our view. Now mm -hmm. Gallup will have a role in the debate on Wednesday night. What will you be doing? Well, the question always is who should be on stage? Because a lot of third party candidates, Susan, would like to be on stage. So the Commission on Presidential Debates a number of years ago established criteria ahead of time that a candidate has to meet to be on the debate. And they have to be constitutionally able to be president, 35 years of old, born in the U.S. Second, they have to be on enough ballots nationwide so that they could theoretically win 270 electoral votes. And third, they have to score 15% percent on an average of five polls prior to the debate. And that's where we come in. Uh, we review the polls and average them and then report back to the commission and says, here are the two people who have 15 percent or higher. And did anybody else come close this year? No, nobody came close at all across all five major polls. The last time anybody was close was back in uh, 1992 when Ross Perot was getting 30 percent in some polls, but none of the other candidates qualified on those pre-established criteria. And that's why Wednesday night we'll see Obama and Romney and none of the other candidates because of those uh, criteria that were put forth by the Commission on Presidential Debates. Well, we'll be watching. Yeah, you'll be there. I'll be there. So next week we'll talk about what you learned and where the race stands. I'm Frank Newport, Gallup Editor-in-Chief. I'm Susan Page, Washington Bureau Chief for USA Today. And this is Election Matters.